All right, so welcome to our webinar tonight to learn more about community solar, how to save money and support the clean energy economy. The, um, sorry, my screen is showing two different things here. I'm Ellen Tone and I am one, I'm the co-chair with, I can see my co-chair here, Ann Harris of the Energy and Climate Committee in Wayland. We're both active members in Energize Wayland and I also help work with Mass Energize, which is sponsoring this four town initiative in Acton, Wayland, Framingham and Natick to promote um, clean energy solutions. And tonight we have Mike Spiro with us from Nextamp. So Mike is running the slide. So next, Mike. Um, plug in, if you haven't been to the website, is our four community website to give you information and answers related to heat pumps, solar, and community solar. Next. These are the three, techno uh, three technologies. And for each of these technologies, you can learn more about it. You can get a volunteer coach, people like Ann and I. Um, and Clovis has gotten some solar coaching and may become one of our solar coaches moving forward. Um, you can learn about all the rebates. You can see testimonials from other folks in town. And it's a really rich website. I encourage you to go to it. And if you've done one of those things, please leave a comment because we're always trying to get, um, get people to talk to each other. Um, next. So these are the kind of what you'll see. Uh, testimonials, which are also coming in from our, in Wayland, we have a site called Energize Wayland, which is our site mostly of activities in Wayland. Framingham has Energize Framingham because I know, um, you know, Steve and Debbie are from Framingham. Um, everybody else is from Wayland. And you can see, as I said, events, uh, coaches and events, um, events I didn't say. So we are running events across all four of these communities. And if you go to the plugin site and just give us your email, we'll make sure you're getting notifications about future, uh, future events. Some of you recognize Steve Wright as our heat pump coach. Some of you have been coached by Steve. Um, so uh, that's a shout out to Steve. Next. Tonight, we're here to talk about community solar, which um, when we do our surveying, most of us don't really understand community solar. So Mike is gonna explain that um, to us. And this is what the site looks like for a specific one of our technologies. I myself am a community solar subscriber, actually with Nexamp. I think Anne, you are too. And uh, last in one calendar year, we saved about 200 bucks. I think we've saved over 300 and something so far in our subscription uh, for community solar. Next, Mike. Um, as part of the plug-in campaign, we, Mass Energize, worked with these four towns to develop a procurement to identify community solar providers. So you don't have to sort through lots of providers. And one of the key criteria was, do you have space for us as subscribers, a room that I could subscribe and start to save money? Mike will speak to that. And the RFP also said, whoever we worked with would have no sign-up fees, no cancellation fees, be really good on the customer service side. And we selected two solar providers, um, Nexamp, um, and that's Mike, which is for folks who are, are don't meet certain income thresholds. If you meet lower income thresholds for your household, uh, SunWealth is our selected provider, and you get um, sort of double the savings um, that they're able to offer for low income households. And that's really as a result of policies from the state, I think it's fair to say. Um, so next, and then I think I'm going to do a, a poll. So before we start, um, we're trying to, as part of plug-in, do um, a good evaluation. So I'm gonna launch a poll. It just has a couple of questions for you guys. And then um, once you answer, we'll we'll hand it up to Mike and then I'll um, do a post poll. Uh, okay, I think we are there on that one. Okay, great. Um, I'm not going to share the results, but uh, the answer is, well, I guess I could share the results just to show that to you. You guys see the results because I don't see it when I share it. So um, so it's new to most of us. Um, uh, and most of us don't know that much uh, about uh, community solar. 
Um, and I also just wanted to get, I think I know where everybody's from and the number, it's mostly from Whalen, two from Framingham. Barbara Holtz, where are you from? You can put it in the chat. Um, and D Flack, I don't know where, where you're from, if you could put that in the chat. All right, over to Mike. Mike's engaging. He's going to talk for maybe 10, 15 minutes, but interrupt him, ask questions. This is the chance to move from, I don't know very much about this, to like, I, I know more and I, I, I know enough to decide whether I might want to do something about this. So over to Mike. All right. Thanks for the intro, Alan. And yeah, glad to see we have a bunch of community solar newbies who are looking to learn more. Um, so yeah, so just to start off, what is community solar? Um, so it's a state supported program uh, to help democratize solar energy. Um, you know, many residents of Massachusetts are renters. Uh, even those that aren't might not have a suitable roof. You might have too much shade. It might not be south facing. It might be too old. It might be too slanted. You know, any number of reasons why rooftop solar might not be a good fit for you. Um, and uh, essentially, it's a subscription service. It's almost like a, a Netflix subscription, but for solar energy. Um, and importing, importantly, because I know a bunch of you guys are from towns that have or are soon to have uh, municipal aggregation programs, uh, this works in addition to that and is essentially a way to stack your savings. So that's one of the big questions I get is, oh, I already have an alternative supplier. My town already has an aggregation. That's great. You can do this in addition and save even more. So in Wayland, aggregation means Wayland electricity choice. We all got mailers. You've seen the bill doors about it. Um, so this this is complementary and additive to that. It's not an or. This is an and possibility. In Framingham, I think you guys are uh, applied to the state to, to run an aggregation program, and it's under review. All right. And how does community solar work? Um, so uh, Nexamp or other community solar developers will build a large solar farm, uh, you know, like football field sized big. It might be on a rooftop, like a warehouse rooftop. It might be on a landfill. Um, uh, it might be on the side of the highway. You might see those on the Mass Pike. Um, we then interconnect that solar farm to the grid. And then um, in the same way that you have an electric meter at your house, uh, the solar farm also has an electric meter, uh, except ours spins backwards because it's, you know, using very little electricity on site and, you know, uh, pushing out almost all that it generates to the grid. And each month, uh, Eversource, or if any of you are National Grid, National Grid, will tell us, hey, how many kilowatt hours, you know, how much electricity did the solar farm produce? And then we can say, all right, great. We know how much we produced. Ellen gets 0.0005% of those credits and gets 0.0007%. I get 0.1%. And essentially we can virtually distribute the credits generated by that solar farm directly onto your Eversource or National Grid bill, depending on which one you have. A, cra um, a, a question, uh, Mike. Uh, sure. Is that only on the energy or does that uh, uh, also <laughs> apply to the uh, transmission chargers, uh, which are higher than the energy chargers? Great question. Uh, it applies to both. So it'll be a new line, and I'll show you a screenshot of this later. It'll be a new line item at the bottom of your bill uh, that applies to all the sections above. And, you know, it's essentially a new item, line item called credits. And it's a negative amount, which is a great amount to see on a bill. Um, and so for me personally, um, like sometimes my bill is actually zero or even negative, uh, which is the best kind of bill to get. Um, and, uh, and then lastly, um, you'll then get a new second bill uh, from Nexamp, where uh, let's say you got uh, $100 worth of credit on your Eversource bill, you'll then get a bill from us uh, for the value of that credit, but at a discount. Uh, and that discount is a constant 12.5%. So if you got $100 worth of credit, you'll then get a bill from Nexamp for $87.50. So in that scenario, you save 
$12.50, multiply that by 12 months, you know, that's a pretty nice chunk of change uh, back in your pocket. And um, it, it's sort of a strange concept. People have a hard time wrapping their head around it. Uh, so I like to use this analogy of community supported agriculture, farm shares, just quick raise of hands. Have any of you guys done something like this before? Wow, awesome, a lot of you guys. So hopefully this will help. So, um, you know, step one is you meet a farmer, um, maybe at your farmer's market and you sign up for a CSA, very similar to how you'd find a community solar provider like Nexamp. Um, that farm uses your commitment to buy the fruits and vegetables that they produce uh, to help run the business and finance the business uh, in the same Oh, I'm sorry. Was there a question? Oh, no. Okay. Um, very similar to how um, Nextamp says to our investors, hey, we have all these people who are wanting to subscribe to solar projects, uh, and that helps us raise money from investors to build more projects. Uh, and then, of course, the best part, in the same way that you get fresh fruits and vegetables uh, from a local farm, you know, you're getting um, local clean electricity, um, not necessarily directly to your house, but you're getting the benefit of that on your electric bill. Um, does that make a little bit more sense to folks now? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. See some nods. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Can I just ask you a question? Um, sure. Like, not to like play that out too much, but with the CSA, you pay up front. So is what you're paying at your 12.5% discount of your example, $100, is that sort of the equivalent of the CSA fee? Yeah, except, yeah, you make a good point. But yeah, it would be almost as if your CSA was billing you monthly uh, instead of annually. Um, so yeah, that's a good distinguishing characteristic. But yeah, you're not prepaying for your electricity annually, um, just monthly. Um, cool. And then just a little bit more about Nexamp. Um, I won't go too much into all these stats, but we're a pretty large developer. We're all over the country now, but our headquarters is in Boston. That's where we started off. We're still very proud of our Massachusetts roots. Uh, and this just gives you a better sense of like what a community solar project looks like. Um, this is actually the project that I was recently subscribed to, which is on a capped landfill in Falmouth. Um, that's the best kind of project. Um, Tom was asking a little bit about this earlier about, um, you know, solar developers who sometimes clear trees to make room for solar panels. Uh, that's a big shame when that has to happen, but this is great where this land was like literally useless, uh, before there were solar, solar panels on it. Uh, and so that's our favorite kind of project, um, you know, similar to a rooftop. Um, but you know, that's not always possible. Uh, and sometimes we do have to put solar panels uh, in places that would otherwise be uh, usable, productive land. Uh, and so we're pretty proud of our commitment to always try to maximize the usability of that land. We were actually one of the pioneers of what's now called agrivoltaics, um, which is essentially um, bringing animals and pollinator plants and um, um, other factors like that um, into the solar farm so that the land is being used for more than just um, solar panels. So these are our, uh, our landscapers, uh, as we like to call them, uh, making sure the grass doesn't get too tall uh, at the solar farm in Upton. Uh, follow along on our Instagram. There's always some great uh, pictures and videos of the, of the sheep uh, roaming around. Okay, but now getting a little bit more into the nitty gritty. Uh, so here's an example of a bill. This is actually a real life, one of my Eversource bills and a real life one of my Nexamp bills. You can see I have this nice no payment due up here at top. Um, so it's a little small, but there's this line now at the bottom called net metering credit, uh, which you can see is beneath supply beneath delivery it applies to both of them 
and so in this case, I got a $269.38 credit from my community solar subscription. Here that is blown up for you a little bit. Um, so I got this Eversource bill on September 21st, 2023. And then like I was saying before, your next amp bill then comes in arrears, uh, where on October 6th, just a couple of weeks later, I got a bill for that $269.38 worth of credits, except I'm getting my 12.5% discount. So I only had to pay $235.71. I saw maybe it was Judy like trying to lean in to look at that line on your Eversource bill. Is there a way for you to just zoom in on the left, Mike, so that's a little more readable? Uh, yeah, this was the best I could do here, where um, this is sort of a blown up version of that net metering credit line that's right here. See that, Judy? It's, uh, it's in all caps. So, so, so we have to pay both of these whatever they are, uh, the uh, Eversource, which is discounted, and then the next amp, which is 87.5%. So um, if we were doing this automatically, then we would have two payees every month. Otherwise, we put two uh, uh, postage stamps on two different envelopes. Uh, right. Is that correct? Yeah, I essentially just have both of mine set to auto pay, uh, and then I don't even have to think about it. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to pay through the mail, uh, the old fashioned way, we do support that as well. I have a couple of questions of this here. So the sure. amount of the net metering net metering credit in this case two sixty nine thirty eight that's re related to your share of the project, right? That has nothing to do with your usage Correct. that month, right? So yeah. so so we're not getting a. 12.5% discount on our electric bill. We're getting a 12.5% discount on the solar energy credits. So, so the percentage against our bill is sort of uncalculable here because, you know, you can't, you know, we wouldn't, you know, it's hard for next time to say what that percent is going to be. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, good point. So as part of the enrollment flow, which I can show you guys a little bit of later, uh, the first step is we ask for a copy of your bill. Um, and you can see here this uh, monthly kilowatt hour use uh, section where we use that to calculate your you know, estimated annual cost to Eversource. So then what we say is, um, okay, here's your annual costs. Let's look at 90% of that um, just to give a little bit of wiggle room. And then we see, okay, how many solar panels on the solar farm should generate about 90% of your annual usage. Um, so over the course of the year, you should be getting enough of these net metering credits to amount to about 90% of your usage. So that's how you figure out how many subscribers kind of fill up the, the capacity of the farm is by looking at their, their uh, historical usage. So exactly. Right. Okay. And yeah, and that can be flexible over time, you know, say, you're going to adopt one of the other plug-in technologies and you're going to get heat pumps or a home EV charger, um, some, you know, a, a solar water or heat pump water heater that's going to increase your electric bill. Um, you can then send us a new copy uh, and then we can increase your allocation of the farm. Um, or on the flip side, you know, say your, your kids are leaving off to college and you're now going to be uh, using a lot less electricity, uh, we can decrease your allocation. Um, so it can be a pretty flexible um, moving target if necessary. We do have a new heat pump, but we've had it for over 12 months now. So they'd be able to use our actual past 12 months. Awesome. History, is that right? Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, on the uh, transfer amount, is that uh, seasonal as an example of would uh, be much lower in December, January, February than it would be in Perfect. Do you want to do, July, do my presentation Mike, for me, Tom? We have to give Tom for that question. <laughs> this, this is a, the, the, the community solar is actually complicated and plain, but you guys are so smart. You're asking all the right questions. Um, yeah, so um, this is sort of a visual graph depicting um, Tom's question here. Uh, and what Steve was getting at before that um, were the, the, the credits you're getting on your bill have nothing to do with the usage 
in your home, you know, so say you go off, um, you know, to your summer home on the Cape uh, for the entire month of June, you're still going to get credits on your electric bill because the solar farm is still generating uh, credits during the month of June. And so this green line tends to be the shape, uh, you know, if any of you guys have have also solar panels on your roof, this probably looks familiar, you know, that solar panels generate a lot of electricity in the summer and sort of the end of spring, beginning of fall. And then in winter, it's very minimal. Um, and so essentially, the sum of this green line over the course of a year is what we're aiming to add up to 90% of your usage. Um, so on any given month, you're not necessarily saving 12 and a half percent. Like in my example here, I got way more credit than my bill actually was. So I was actually spending more. Um, but if I add up all those bills over the course of a year, that's where I'm getting my 12 and a half percent savings. Because essentially the this high credit amount that I was getting uh, in September, so it was probably right around here, I was then using up that credit um, in the winter months um, and those excess credits were getting applied. And then, you know, the year restarts and, you know, the whole process starts again. So just a comrade. So if you're the kind of person where um, you, where that annoys you, where you're seeing a ton and ton of credits and you're thinking, I, I built up all these credits. I'm never going to really reuse them. And that creates angst. You know, we can downsize your subscription a little, but it, it is just, we, we have both solar and community solar. So we build up a lot of credit in the summer. And of course we have a heat pump. So we, and a heat pump, hot water heater, we just sort of work them off. And, you know, by the, by midwinter, we're, we're back to pay, paying some of the bill. Um, yeah. The good news though, is that that balance you carry is actually visible on your Eversource bill. So again, sorry if it's really small on your screens, but it's this third line here called balance forward where I had the previous month a negative $213.50 balance already. And here I am getting another, you know, $269.38 credit. Um, so that's a good example of sort of what it looks like here, where you're just going to be building up this big bank of credits that's then going to get spent um, in the winter. Uh, Mike, can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, your analogy with the CSA, I've, I've never had a CSA, and the reason is that you have to get too many vegetables <laughs> um, so that it wasn't, I looked at it and I thought, that's not worth it for me. And I'm wondering if there's something equivalent with Nexamp that if you don't use a certain amount or if the expectations, I mean, you look at the old bill, so you know what the usage is. So it's, will you take anybody even if they don't use a lot? Yeah, we'll take anybody, even if they don't lose a lot. And like I mentioned before, if we sign you up and you're getting too many credits, you know, even over the course of a full year, you're still carrying a balance forward of credits. Um, then we can just reduce your allocation, you know, from five panels to four panels or. Okay. Um, well, you'll go from so. 10 zucchini to two zucchini, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know what you're talking about. It can be overwhelming in the summer when you get a giant thing of kale and it's more yeah. kale than you could ever hope to eat in your life. Right. Uh, but not a problem with community solar. All right. And then very quickly, um, here's a little bit more info on the Sunwealth side, um, which is one of the partner companies we're working with here uh, for you to know how you can qualify for that. So one way is through income eligibility. You'll see here on the delivery section of your bill, either an R2 or an R4 rate. Um, that would mean that you're eligible for the 20 to 25% discount instead of the 12.5% discount. Um, and if you're a member of SNAP or uh, you live in a public housing development, um, that would be another good indicator that, that this is something you have and are eligible for. 
Uh, the second way to qualify, um, and I had a screenshot of, of Wayland here, um, cause I figured that's where most of you guys were going to be from is, is if you fall into a certain, um, environmental justice community census tract, uh, which Wayland actually has none of, uh, cause it's fully gray here. Uh, but for those of you in Framingham, I think there are a couple, uh, if you're in one of the green or blue zones, um, that would be, regardless of your income, another way for you to qualify for that larger discount. Um, so if you're not sure, if you don't know where to find this R2, R4 thing, if you're not sure exactly, you might qualify from where you live. I'll drop my email or maybe Ellen can put it for me um, in the chat and I can uh, help you look into that to see which one you'd qualify for. And yeah, um, so let's say we've gone through this presentation, you're interested, what do I do next? Um, you can go to pluginmetrowest.org like Ellen was showing, read some testimonials, learn a little bit more, uh, hear about it in some other language than what you just heard from me, um, you know, and figure out if you're um, um, El uh, and eligible for the extra discount or not, and either go to the Sunwealth landing page or the NextAmp landing page. Uh, both have this nice co-branded Mass Energize um, and go from there and get you started. And uh, like Ellen was mentioning at the beginning, um, just to set your expectations, this is not something that can start instantly. Um, so even if there was a space on an existing solar farm uh, that was the perfect amount that you needed for your home and we could submit you today, um, Eversource can be a little challenging to work with and they might take, you know, three to four months just to process our request to add you to the solar farm. Um, but um, and in some cases, you know, uh, we might be totally full and waiting for a new solar farm to go live, say next month. Um, so there can be a bit of a waiting game, uh, maybe up to six months or so. Um, but essentially, there's no harm in getting your name in and getting on the list because more and more people are getting interested. The more and more people sign up, that helps us finance more and more projects. So it's a nice sort of you know, snowball effect. And the sooner you get in, you know, the, the faster you'll make your way through the line. Uh, and we'll send you um, sort of emails over time to let you know sort of where you are in the process and when to expect to start receiving credits. Um, and I had a couple other, you know, this is just an example of the next landing page where it's very simple. You're just entering your zip code, the utility, um, giving us your contact information and, and uploading your utility bill. And that's essentially all you need to do to get the process started. It's funny you mentioned that because uh, when I first looked at those NextAmp uh, website screens, the first thing that I thought, well, this has to be um, a scam because they're, they're way too cagey, you know, check availability. And before there's any information for explanation about how it works, the waiting period, all the stuff you just mentioned in your PowerPoint, it wants your contact information. So it's not the most sort of uh, trust in, inducing kind of sequence for, for how, how, how you uh, get through the site there. Yeah, that's, that's good. good feedback. And I can pass that along um, to the marketing team. But yeah, we're, we're already starting to work on that. Um, I had just sent to Ellen um, earlier this week, like a new video that we produced um, that helps to explain this process in a nice sort of animated style um but that's going to be started to integrate it into this flow um so i can send that to you guys as well but yes we're we're working hard to sort of lower the barrier to entry to community solar and and uh and make it so that anyone can can understand it and you know be interested uh, to a question mike um uh, in, in in our case um uh, uh, for the past year i've i get an ever source bill but it's uh through NRG, which, by the way, helped uh, buy a first-class uh, ticket out to the West to go fly fishing. Fly fishing. But I'm switching to this. Um, well, there's another Wayland plan. Yeah, and uh, the uh, that won't be an issue, will it? Uh, nope. And, yeah, you can see I went back to my example here. This is when I was living in Boston. 
and again, sorry if this is small, but I was part of the Boston Community Choice Electricity Program okay. um, when I took these screenshots here. So essentially what we're doing is um, we're looking less at your usage. I, I know I was talking about this table earlier. We're looking more at just your annual costs, you know, which is essentially your usage multiplied by um, you know, your supply charges and these other distribution charges. Um, so essentially Nexamp doesn't care whether you're on, you know, an alternative supplier or community aggregation or just the base Eversource rate. We're just looking at how much do you pay Eversource over the course of a year? Um, so short story, it's totally fine to be part of the uh, municipal aggregation program. You should definitely do that. Stack your savings you know, go on a, on a second, you know, first class uh, fly fishing trip next year. I, I, I think By the way, as another aside in the last one, uh, I have records going back to 1972 of all electricity, oil, wood that I bought, chainsaws, et cetera. So if they wanted uh, 40 years of electricity usage, <laughs> I got it. Uh, wow, I'm impressed. Very thorough. Eve, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, um, Mike, you were saying that they don't look so much at the at the usage and the kilowatt hours as much as the like the dollar amounts. But I thought you said they would need to figure out if you get you know allocated three panels, four panels, five panels. So that would seem to indicate they do you know, very much care about the kilowatt hour usage. Or did I not understand that properly? Well, yeah. So essentially, the you know we're getting a dollar values worth on the credits in the same way that you guys are getting a dollar you know, cost on your kilowatt hours. Um, so it's it's much simpler math to just compare dollars to dollars instead of kilowatts to kilowatts. Um, so are there the so-called RECs behind the scenes that, that you guys deal with the way? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. good question. That's actually part of how, you know, this like too good to be true situation happens where, um, you know, as part of these big, solar farms, we're generating a lot of um, RECs, uh, which stands for renewable energy credits, um, that companies like Walmart or Starbucks uh, will purchase um, as a way for them to help, um, you know, show their customers and investors that they're, you know, uh, investing in climate and trying to reduce their carbon footprint. Um, so that's sort of, we're sort of the middleman between um, you know, these uh, investors and corporations who are who are trying to invest in clean energy projects and, um, you know, residential customers like you who are signing up to uh, offtake the electricity. Um, so essentially us selling the, you know, cleanness of the energy to those companies is part of how we're able to offer you guys, uh, a, you know, that 12 and a half percent discount. So I, I had two questions or two things that would be helpful for you to share, Mike. One is just my my pitch on this, which is this is one of those rare chances. You're going to save money. And the more subscribers to Community Solar, the easier it is for them to build more projects and get them financed because the financial markets are saying there's a lot of people subscribing. So we can, we can, you know, the pro forma works, Steve, right? We can pencil this thing out. So that, you know, we can help grow the clean energy economy in Massachusetts and these projects have to be built in the Eversource East Territory, so they're gonna they're gonna be projects built. You know, these are gonna be local Massachusetts jobs, which we certainly like to see. Um, so it is a it is a way for us all to support the future economy we want we want to build. So that's my pitch. The second thing, if you're nimble enough to do it, Mike, I do think the the next step interface as a subscriber is pretty good, where you can just log in and at any time. So Tom. Um, because of regulatory factors, we do get these two bills and it's annoying. I get a bill from Nexam and then I get my Eversource bill and I'm always pretty sure that I'm ahead of the game, but I don't really like to like, oh, let me look at one and the other. And the Nexam interface just shows me that so I can log in at any time to see where where I am on all that, even though I have them both um, on auto pay. In some other states, they've they've integrated this where there aren't two bills. It just all gets netted out on one but Massachusetts has to do some regulatory stuff to get to that point. 
So while you're pulling it up, I also just want to make sure if Amy or Barbara or Debbie or Clovis have any questions. That, and I think already understands this, but if you do have a question, anybody else, Amy or Clovis, Debbie, Barbara, questions, you know, Mike should be able to answer everything. But do you want to show us that interface, Mike? Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is my dashboard. Um, thankfully, I don't know. I don't owe XAMP, Nextamp any money right now. So this is zero. Um, but it's showing me my lifetime savings, my lifetime carbon emissions. Uh, this is my new project. I've moved to national grid territory, so I'm no longer assigned to that um, Barnstable landfill project I showed you guys. Um, I, I should have mentioned that earlier, and Ellen made the good point about the local uh, clean energy jobs that um, essentially the only limitation is that the solar farm is in the same load zone as you, which is Eversource East. Uh, so Barnstable is also, even though it sounds far away from Boston, is also part of Eversource East. Um, so that's how I was able to subscribe to that project. So your project won't necessarily be in Wayland, but it will at least be you know, in the region. It's not going to be in California or something like that. And, and you'll know which one it is and where it's located. And as you see, you can see a picture of the actual thing. Yep, exactly. And uh, looking at this uh, this uh, solar farm, is that uh, sterile underneath the panels? Uh, can uh, animals move around? Does grass grow? Does it have to be mown, mowed, et cetera? Uh, yeah, great question. So yeah, um, I'm not sure about this project specifically. I need to learn more about it like I did with my last one. But yeah, I, I think I was mentioning earlier that um, there's some developers who, you know, will do whatever it takes to build the project, which might mean clear cutting a huge amount of trees. Um, and then, you know, they develop those projects and then they move on to the next one and they cut down a bunch of trees there and because they're always moving on to the next one. Um, you know, the community is not able to sort of wag their fist at them and, you know, make change. Uh, but NextAmp is actually the only community solar developer that owns and operates our own projects for the long run. Most of the companies like, oh, they'll develop the project and then they hire someone else to find the customers and build the customers. Um, we're essentially finding the customers and building the customers and supporting the customers for the projects that we build. Um, you know, and so in this case, this is in Palmer Mass. So we're going to be part of the Palmer Mass community for the next 40 years minimum, you know, as long as these solar panels last. And so um, that means that um, we don't want to be cutting a whole bunch of trees for no reason. And we want to be letting the local sheep farmer, you know, bring his sheep onto the field to mow the grass or, you know, planting pollinator friendly vegetation so that the local bee population can be healthy. Um, so, you know, there's, I can't guarantee for you that not a single tree was cut down in the building of this solar farm here, but I can tell you that, you know, some developers uh, take this, you know, social responsibility more seriously than others. And, and NextAmp is definitely, um, among the best, if not the best on that front. And I can send you guys some articles that talks about um, a bunch of those sorts of programs that we do. Barbara, you have a question? Unmute. You're still muted, Barbara. Barbara, you're muted, you gotta unmute. Forgot about that, thanks. Um, so could it ever happen that as this business model evolves, that I, a customer, or we as several groups of customers, um, get some crazy idea that we would like to participate in more than one solar farm. Maybe we learn that it's advantageous to us to do so. Maybe we get better rates if we do participate, uh, you know, in North Dakota, as well as, um, you know, Barnstable or wherever. So I, I just wonder if this concept has been discussed ever. Yeah. And sorry, my cat was crying to get out of the room. That's why I had to open the door there. Um, yeah. Um, 
The short answer is that there wouldn't be much advantage for you to do that because um, there's not value in getting more credits than um, you're using. Um, so, you know, whether it's a farm in Barnstable or a farm in Minnesota or a farm in Wayland, um, essentially the only thing that really matters to you is getting enough credits to cover your usage. And if you're getting more credits than that, then you're just, you know, going to have an infinitely growing balance of those credits on your bill. So if you're in, you know, if you're getting a home EV charger, if you're getting heat pumps, if you're getting a heat pump, hot water heater, things that will be increasing your usage, then, um, you know, we can be increasing your allocation, but there'd be no reason to otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, be signing up for multiple. I guess the, the only, um, the only situation I can think of that is the case for some of our customers is say you have multiple homes. Um, you know, you have a, um, a summer house in Maine uh, or Minnesota, or I forget exactly which state you said, you could have multiple accounts. Uh, essentially, the accounts are on a per electricity account basis, not a per person basis. Um, so for each of your homes, you could have an account um, no matter what state it was in, as long as mm -hmm. you know, we had a community solar farm there. Or if you had a home and a business, um, that could be another scenario like that. Um, but Mike, don't you, for your, for our Eversource bills with Wayland Electricity Choice, we need a community solar project in our territory, right? Like I can't, I, the regulations don't, are not advantageous to me, Barbara. I, it wouldn't make no sense financially for me to sign up for community solar in another state because uh, we don't, the, the regulatory environment would not result in that resulting. So, so, so we get assigned uh, the, I don't know what, the lay of the land that we, <laughs> that we're growing energy on. <laughs> I'm still trying okay. to conceive of this or create a metaphor in my mind about it. But so okay. Basically, like, um, it's like um, we're playing on a playground. We can only use the equipment in our playground. And um, the way the regulations are set up, we can only get credits, I think this is right, Mike, from a community solar project that is in our playground. And it's not even all of Eversource. It, Eversource has different territories. So we need to be in our Eversource territory because they, they keep track of things in that way at the utility level. Yeah. That's that actually great. is going to change. Um, great. Now that I, yeah. is, um, huh. ISO New England, which is like the regional grid operator for all of New England, um, they're realizing that a lot of uh, solar developers like Nexamp, it's easiest, easiest for us to build farms in like rural Maine, for example, um, where there's a lot more open land. Uh, but there's a lot fewer people who live in rural Maine um, than, you know, in Metro Boston, for example. So it's starting to be discussed that like, hey, should it be possible uh, to transfer net metering credits across utility lines? And if you think even bigger than that, like, hey, probably the best place for us to be building solar farms is in Arizona, you know, and New Mexico and Utah, where it's just deserts and, you know, 340 days of sun a year. Uh, so that's probably even the best alternative, uh, although then you don't get sort of the local jobs aspect of it. But, you know, these conversations are starting to happen, but at least for now, your project would have to be in Eversource East territory. Thank you. And another question, like for me personally, thinking ahead. Uh, so in Wayland, I live in a relatively small home, like a Cape Cod cottage type design mm -hmm. in a compact neighborhood that I think once was an orchard, but, you know, no longer. Um, and I have to think about the future or future design of the house. I mean, sometimes I just enjoy fantasizing, but the truth is at the moment, I don't really need um, solar panels to extend my, you know, the, uh, I'm not sure what, my, the capacity. The only thing I think that I 
would use or expand in the future is um, more usage for heat pumps, but I can't think of anything. And, and I can't get my own thoughts around me uh, and an EV. My house doesn't even have a garage. So I have to think about what am I going to do? Charge the house overnight in the coldest of cold air? You know, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of future decisions. So the only practical decision for me right now is uh, heat pumps that might bring less expensive uh, but efficient heat in the winter, which, you know, at times may be much colder and will require more energy than what I'm using now. Uh, you know, I mean, I think all of us are trying to think about how do we look at this in looking into the future. And so that's my current plan. Otherwise, I'm faced with, well, do I build another story onto my house and give it a metal roof and do this and do that? And then I'm dead broke. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's the that's the beauty of community solar is you don't have to worry about solar panels on your roof. You don't have to pay for them. You don't have to look at them if you don't like the way right. they look. You know, these are out of sight, out of mind. Right. I understand. Landfill, on a warehouse rooftop on, you know, uh, somewhere else. And you're just getting all the benefit. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're not needing to put down a whole bunch of cash and, and make a 30 year commitment. You know, you can sign up and cancel just as easily as you sign up and cancel, you know, for Netflix or um, anything like that. I, and an, a related question, and this will be my last one, I think. I'm going to call this uh, the topic of liability. I mean, I'm not deep in the forest by any means, but there's a stand of quite tall evergreen trees uh, around my home and other my neighbor's homes. Um, I moved into this neighborhood maybe 20 years ago. Trees were much shorter then. Mm -hmm. So... What if there is a, you know, really bad storm and some of these trees fall over on a home or, you know, break into a house, so to speak? Am I the homeowner and my insurance liable? Because the, this is kind of a force of nature damaging the home and messing with my uh, energy use. Yeah. So again, it's another benefit of, you know, the solar panels being elsewhere where if solar panels were on your roof and a tree fell on your roof and collapsed the whole thing in, um, you know, yeah, that would be um, a situation for you and your home insurance company. Um, but, you know, I'm going to interrupt for one sec. Oh, I lost Steve. Darn it. Okay. Oh. Um, um, answer this question. Nobody else leave. Cause I want to run the, final poll as we're losing people. Um, so I'm going to, while you're talking, can I run the poll while you're talking? I think I can. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You guys keep talking. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so you would not have to worry about trees falling on the next amp solar panels or, or hail falling on the next amp solar panels. Uh, that's essentially our problem to worry about. Um, and we take care of all that for you. Um, so ju just to clarify, in this situation, you're not needing to put anything on your roof uh, or pay for anything at your house. Does that Thanks. make sense? Yeah. Just, I do want you all to answer this poll while you're um, thinking, but Clovis, any, just to put you on the spot, any questions from you? Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm contemplating installing solar panels on my roof. So it's a significant capital expense, which you don't have for community solar. So what's the downside of community solar compared to home solar? Yeah, I mean, the downside is that, um, you know, with solar panels on your roof, you'd be getting 100% discount, essentially, because you're getting all of those net metering credits because um, you've prepaid for the solar panels and you own them. In the case of community solar, uh, you're only getting the 12 and a half percent off. So if you can afford, you know, that upfront capital expense for the solar panels, you're ultimately going to be saving more. 
Um, but uh, Ellen and I were just talking, you know, before folks started showing up, like at minimum, you could just sign up for community solar now and use it until you got solar panels on your roof. Like, or maybe you might or, be like or, Ellen and your roof is not large enough or, you know, situated right enough for your solar panels to cover your full usage so that you can have solar panels and community solar, you know, to make up the rest. So a okay. question. Okay, so just oh. you could you could size your system a little bigger, Clovis, and then when your came your community when your solar project came on, you could decide whether you want still uh, had a need for the community. You still had enough of a bill to pay uh, to use the discount because there will always be the distribution um, costs and so on. So I I don't know. You have to look at the sizing your system when you withdraw from community solar. It's also not instantaneous. It probably takes you Mike three or four months to to get off. So you just, you'd have to plan a little, but, um, you know, we, we do, and also does both has solar and community solar. So I think three of you have completed the, the polls. So I'm hoping at least one more. Time. Ellen, sorry to interrupt. There are times that I find the poll really difficult to okay. submit input on. Like I answered, let's see, I answered the first two, and I cannot even enter a vote for number three. I mean, I physically am unable to enter. Yeah, I don't know scroll why. Scroll down. Scroll. You have to I, scroll down. I did. Uh, Judy, you want to share your screen? And who hasn't answered it? I, I can't do it because I'm showing the poll. I can't share my screen to show Barbara what to. Oh, do. it finally, it finally did. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. okay good. good. Great. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to end the poll. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Um, Tom, you had a question? Uh, yeah, it's a practical one. Uh, are we going to get an email with these um, uh, URLs so we can just click and, uh, and instead of wondering, how do I get in touch with Nexamp or Yeah, well, whatever. I'm going to put it right in the chat. How do you feel about chat? the chat? But we'll send a follow-up email. But if you just go to www.plug in metrowest.org. <laughs> okay. I'll send a follow up email. We'll send the slides, but from plugin, I'm just going to share. Uh, Mike, you want to just share your screen and navigate from plugin? Sure. I was just uh, looking up the YouTube video, but here. You want me to do it? You got it? Plugin. So I'm on the plugin site here. I got to move. So you type in pluginmetrowest.org, Tom, and I'll send a follow-up email with that, but that's that's like an easy thing to remember, pluginmetrowest.org, and then Mike will navigate you uh, to it. You can. Yep, and then so you- I took a screenshot, I got it. Okay. Awesome. Then you go to technologies up here at the top and you hit community solar. And then this is uh, the page that we had screenshots of earlier in uh, the slideshow where you get sort of the reminder of what it is, why to do it. Um, here you can click to learn more about the vendors uh, and you get more into Nexamp and Sunwealth. Uh, and there's the links to our various pages here. So here's the Nexamp one uh, and here's the Sunwealth one. Right. And so it's helpful for us if you go through the plugin site, because then Nextamp knows you came because of this program that we're running. And so I believe we're going to get the very best possible customer service that way, Tom. You could, of course, just type in Nextamp, but I'd prefer you go in this way because then we can track it. And Mike shared with me earlier for our four communities, there are 54 community solar subscribers in Wayland, Natick, Acton, Framingham. Wayland currently has 12 um, subscribers, Anne and I are two of them. Um, so we would love people to go through the plugin um, metrowest.org site. And I'll send follow-up emails in, in the next couple of days with this recording, Mike's slides, and um, and the link, Tom. Sounds good. All right. Barbara, do you have another question or that's a legacy hand raise? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. But now I... Okay. Wait a minute. Mike, where... I lost my. I, mean, um, I, I really want to take it. I want to. I promise. No, I want to get. I want to get his. Uh, what do you call it? I oh, got it. Okay, I want to get the link. Plug in metrowest.org, 
And then you can just scroll down. You'll see what you can go to technologies, can make, pick community solar from the top. Or if you just scroll down a little, there's the three. No, boxes. I want to see the video. The I want to see the link. The link. We will make sure we have that too. All right. I think we're at the hour. You guys all asked great questions. I hope we've tempted you. Anne, is there anything else you want to add to the discussion here, Anne? Uh, no, I think it's, uh, I'm looking forward to getting uh, community solar. I actually, um, I just signed up. So I'm on the wait list with other folks, but I've had solar panels on my own house uh, for 10 years now or more. So uh, those are paid off now. So I'm getting, uh, you know, free electricity uh, from those, which is great. But we still have an electric bill because we, like a lot of people in Wayland, we live in the woods and we, we get a fair amount of sun, but not enough to cancel out, you know, our whole electric bill. And we've gotten heat pumps and we have an electric vehicle. Uh, so we still have some uh, electric electric bill and, and Eversource is pretty expensive. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a discount uh, from Nexamp. So I'll wait to hear more from, from you about your the status of those. Awesome, which reminds me of one last benefit that the 12 and a half percent discount scales with the Eversource rate. So oh. as the Eversource rates grow, you know, the 12 and a half percent will be off of that amount, you know, as opposed to the current amount. So great. Grows with you. Excellent. All right. We're at 8 30. So I'm going to call it. I, I appreciate you guys all uh, spending time. I'm curious how people found out. Judy, did you find out about this from the Energize Wayland newsletter or for the post that I did at Bethel or you don't remember? I don't remember. Yeah. And Clovis, you probably found out from the Energize Wayland newsletter, I'm guessing. Tom, how did you find out about this event? I, I don't know. I uh, I look at a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> and this is the guy who's got 40 years of electric bills. So see, he really... Yeah. And Barbara, was it from our newsletter? Energized Wayland? No, no. Um, I think it was an announcement for Temple Shared Tech Club because our environmental committee was yep. chatting with you. And yeah. I have a question for Tom. What do you... What do you what fly fish do you fly after out in Missouri? You go up to steelheads or what? Uh, you know what? Uh, today I uh, stopped briefly on the Sudbury River. Yesterday I was on White Pond and Concord. Uh, Saturday I was on Lake Kachichuit. Last week I was oh. in Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire. And uh, last October I was uh, in Montana. I'm only 84 years old, so you got to <laughs> keep moving, right? Uh so uh, mainly, uh, but whatever it is, uh, bass in the Sudbury, trout in Lake Kachichuan, on and on. Um, Tom, so, is the ice out on Lake Winnipesaukee? <laughs> no, the ice uh, went out early. Actually, it was a record, uh, uh, a record uh, early date for uh, ice out in Winnipesaukee, unfortunately. 